Good afternoon. We're going to talk about Welder Pro. So this is video number one using Welder Pro, which is an extension of RoboGuide. On here, I have a table set up with a robotic arm, exact same one we have in our class, which is the LR Mate 200 ID7L, and it has a Lincoln welder attachment to it. I do have a lap weld, which is going to be the first weld that we're going to go through. So we're going to go through the steps on to how to program our teach pendant, how to move the robot into position, and then in later videos we'll talk about speeds and feeds, how to modify those to get the exact weld we want. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a couple point registers for this robot cell because we're going to be creating a couple different welds on our table here and I want to be able to utilize the same positions over and over again no matter what program we are in. So we're going to set up point registers because it is a global position and there are going to be two setups we're going to set. The first one is going to be our home view, which is right here, and then our safe position, which we're going to rotate the robot off to the side so it's out of the way so that people can get in and grab the workpiece from the fixture without running into the actual robot itself. We may add a third one later on for a wire clean out. So to access the point registries, we go to data, type, position registers and you'll notice that under welder pro we do have another data type which is welding procedures we will go into that later on so let's go into position register here's point register number one so i'm going to save this position so i'm going to go shift record so point one has been recorded we, so now that we have it recorded let's go unshift position and here's the XY data. Now this is all dependent on what user frame you are. So if we're going between user frames on each of the programs, like user frame one, user frame two, user frame three, then it makes sense to switch the representation from Cartesian to joint mode. We're going to go continue. So now that we're in joint mode, it doesn't matter what frame we're in, these are all going to be the degree of the joints. So this will now allow us to go between user frames so that we don't get errors on what frame we were in when we actually set this up. So the next item we're going to do is set up our positions. I'm going to go done and I'm going to put in my information here. So I double click options keyboard and I'm going to call this my home position. Let's go to a safe position. So I'm going to go position or you can joint jog your robot to where it's supposed to be. So I'm going to go negative 90 so I like to put it off to the side and then I'm also going to move make sure the tip is also down and also away. Okay so I'm going to save this now as my safe position. So I'm going to go shift record. Now it's recorded. Let's go into the actual position so turn off shift position and let's switch it from Cartesian to joint mode. There we go. And then done. And let's name this as safe position. There we go. So now we have our second point registry open. So now let's go to the select and let's create a new file. So go create and let's call this lap weld. And we'll do lap weld one, just in case we add another lap weld later on. Hit OK. And we're going to go to edit our actual program. And then we're, we're going to add a few lines here. And then we're going to start adding some headings to this. So let's go to ECDM. And I'm going to insert maybe like 20 lines so that I can jump between here and leave enough spacing. So the first thing I'm going to do is set up my frame. So I'm going to go new instruction miscellaneous, remark, and these are going to be my frames. Then I'm going to make sure I have plenty of room for my frames. So we have a tool frame, we have a user frame that we're going to set up. Here's going to be my space, and then this is going to be the start of anything else. So let's set up our frames first. So I'm going to go to frames, new instruction, over, offset frames, we're going to set up our tool frame and we're going to use tool frame number one, which is our welder. Then we're going to set up our user frame. We're going to use user frame number one, which is going to be our world mode. We're going to go new instruction, arrow over, offset frames, U frame number one. 
Okay, so we have our tool frame, our user frame, when we arrow down, we're going to add our safe position here. So I'm going to go add move point. We're going to go joint mode. And we're going to go into number one so we can arrow over number one. And we're going to go to choice position register number one, which is going to be our home view. Um, actually, let's go number two, which is our safe position. So it's out of the way. So we're going to start out at our safe position. And let's add a line here. So we insert a line so we can have a heading. Because I forgot to do that. And we have new instruction and miscellaneous remark. And this is going to be our safe position. And then we can switch it to home position if we want, which will bring it up front. Remark. And then we we'll bring it to my home position up front and we go choice point register number one and that's going to be our home position okay so we go from our frames we set up our frames we are starting out in the safe position and then it's going to go to the home position which is up front and then we're going to come down and go to our starting weld position so we're going to go new instruction remark and this is going to be my weld start safe position Start safe position and let's bring this robot to the front area. So I'm going to do go up here, shift, and then I'm going to go step mode, go through. So it's in safe position, then it's going to go to the home position. There we go. And then we're going to go down to weld start. So I'm going to hold shift, turn off shift, and then let's rotate this around and bring this down to this position right here. So on RoboGuide, you can easily just click the U tool, and here's the U tool, and you'll be able to move or manipulate the tool based on this. But if you do not have RoboGuide and you have the actual robot in front of you, you just switch between the coordinates. So if I go coordinate and world mode, you can see world mode will allow us to jog up, down, left, right, and rotation around that point. We can also go to tool mode, which is based on the actual wire itself so i'm going to actually switch to world mode first and then i'm going to jog it down now you can do that on the teach pendant or because we're using software we can easily just move it into place on the actual screen okay. so then i'm going to move it through and this is where you get to eye level to where you start and i'm going to switch between the views so that i know where i'm supposed to be and we rotate my welder so that it is facing towards my lap weld, which is right here. And I'm going to go on the R of 180 degrees. And now that rotates around that point. And now I can bring it down to my welding portion. And once you kind of get to this point where you can't really move it anymore, then you can use the jog. Now, if you're on an actual robot, you have to use the jog point. And I would use the, the fine or even 1% to get it close, and then the very fine to get it down from there. Very fine, and then we get it into place. So now I'm in place, and now I'm going to go to the top view to make sure I'm directly over where I'm supposed to be. So I'm going to weld from right to left here. Rotate this around, make sure I'm on the end here. I'm going to go in just a hair bit. Right. All right, so now that I have this in position, what I'm going to do now is rotate this so that I am the correct angles. Okay, so right now you can see on our stick here, we should be 45 degrees to the 90. So our stick is about 45. Um, again, that's plus or minus a few degrees and you don't have to be exact. You don't have to get out a protractor or a compass or anything along those lines. But we also want to make sure that we have a slight angle so that we have a drag weld instead of a push. So we want to be a slight angle, which is about 15 to 25 degrees facing in the opposite direction of where we're going to go. So our direction is to the right, so that means we want to be facing to the right. So the actual stick is coming out to the left. So we want to put a slight rotation on this. So I pulled up my screen here, so position, and we're going to go to the W, and then we're going to go again between 25 to 15 degrees. I like to go 20 degrees. I found a 
to be the best on our welders. Again, the only way to actually figure this out is to actually do a bunch of test welds with your actual robotic welder. Okay, so we are 45 degrees and then we have a 15 degrees in the direction we're going to go, so it's actually pointing to the left. Okay, so that is called a drag weld. And that gets a little bit better penetration on the weld rather than a push weld. So there's pluses and minuses to both of those. So I'm gonna go down, so this is gonna be my position. And then this is gonna be a space. And then right here, let's add another remark. New remark. And this is gonna be my weld start. So I'm gonna add move point. And we're going to go down linearly to that point, and we will change the speed um, in a minute. So we're going to go down to this point. So now what we're going to do is we're going to bring this up to our safe position. So I always like to bring it down to the start position, and then I set up my safe position because I know I'm exactly here. This doesn't have to be exactly where it's supposed to be. So now that I have it in position, I'm going to switch it from world mode to tool mold, so coordinate to tool, and notice how you have your Z, and the Z is in the direction of the actual wire. So if I pull up on the Z, we can bring it to our safe position. So I'm going to bring it to, say, 50 millimeters. And you just want to make sure you're out of the direction of the fixture or away from anything else of the part. So I'm going to go 50 millimeters in this case. So we're out of the way. And then we're going to save this position. So we're going to go from our safe position to our home position, and we're going to go down to our welding start safe position. Then from there, we're going to go straight into our welding part, and then we're going to start the weld. So I'm going to save this, and we're going to go to this position as a joint movement. So we're going to go fine joint. So we're always going to stop at that point, and then we're going to go down. So we're going to go 100% here. Again, depending on your robot and how you have it clamped to the ground, you can go 100%. But usually if you have a table that shakes, you probably want to slow down the speed of the robot because these robots can move very, very quickly. And sometimes 100% of a joint movement down to a certain area will actually shake the fixture and shake the table. So you have to be careful about going with that speed. Okay. So let's just kind of run through this entire program, see where we're at and how we're going to end up to our starting position. So I'm going to go uh, switch to our step mode, which we are in, and I'm going to kick up the speed to 100%, or we'll just go maybe 50%. Then we're going to go shift forward, and it's going to say you're out of position. Just hit enter, forward again. It'll go through our user frames. It'll go to our safe position. There's our safe position. Then it's going to go to our home position, which is up front. Then it's going to go down to our weld safe position. There we go. And then it's going to bring us down to the weld start position. And this is where we're going to start the actual weld itself. So after this position, we're going to go weld start. And we're going to go inside here, we're going to go a linear weld. And we're going to do inches per minute because we're English system. So here's our position. And we're going to go 100 inches per minute. We're going to do weld start. So now you'll notice it's swapped to however inches per minute we're going to get to that point right here. Um, and then we're going to start the weld with procedure one, schedule one. We'll talk more about procedures and schedules in a different video, but basically it's referencing a chart that tells about the voltage, the speed, the wire speed, and everything else you need in order to get from one place to the other and weld it. Okay, so we're going to have our weld start, and then we're going to now bring our robot to the second part, and then we're going to end the weld. So I'm going to switch back to the world mode, world mode, and we bring it over along our path of welding to our end of our piece. And I'm going to go a little bit in, not going to go all the way to the end. There we go. And this is going to be my weld end. So I'm going to go over here to number 16, and I'm going to make a new direction. So I'm going to go weld end. Doing it, might as well add the second remark of weld end. 
All right, so now for our weld end, we're in position. So we're going to go weld end. And we're going to get to that weld end as a linear. And we're going to have a, as a part of that schedule, there's actually a weld speed in there. So we're going to utilize that schedule fully. Now, if you want to override it with something else, this is how you override it. I always put in the weld speed, find weld end. And the end procedure, you can have a dwelling, which means it's going to stay there for a few seconds to finish up that weld. But right now, we're going to just leave it as procedure one and weld one. We'll go back and we'll modify those a little later um, on different programs. Okay, so we're going to end that weld. It's going to pull from that schedule for the speed in which it's going to travel. And now we're going to go to at safe position. So we switch back to our tool mode and I'm going to go up that 50 amount so I could type in 50 if I want there we go and now I'm going to put myself into that safe position so weld end safe position so I'm going to go add move point we're going to get there a linear so that it doesn't rotate out into the fixture it just goes in a straight line then I'm going to insert a few lines and now we're going to go to our home position so I'm actually going to copy this up here and I'm going to paste it down here. So I go ECDM, copy, and I'm going to go select, arrow down, and then I'm going to go copy, and then I'm going to go down to the end, and then I'm going to go paste, and using the same positions as we had up there. So then it's going to go from that safe position to that home position. Now at that point we can now go to, if we want to, the safe position, or we can go on to the next weld. Okay. So a few things we did not talk about when we went through this whole scenario of setting this up. You'll notice that there's nothing at the end of this welder. Okay, there's no cord okay, going to the actual feeder for the wire. You have to be extremely careful about making sure that you are not wrapping this cord around, kinking it in any sort of fashion. You have to try to make this as straight as possible. That's one downfall about the software versus real life. Software, you can't see if you're actually kinking the cable that's coming off of this weld. In real life, you can obviously see that. So you have to be careful about when you're rotating the head and rotating into position that you're not rotating around that wire feed. Running this at full speed, so I'm going to turn off step mode. I'm going to go to the top here, so I'm going to shift up, make sure I'm at the top, and then I'm going to hit enter on this. I'm going to turn off the teach pendant, and then I'm going to run the actual cycle. Coming on up. Rotate around. Now what's nice about Welder Pro is it actually makes that weld in there. So I'm going to rotate this around so you can see. There's my weld. Rotate around. And now it goes to that home position. And now we have our weld. 